Hey, isn't Ontario weather wonderful? It's Russ on the May 26th edition, Better Cross by Barker. It's a heat warning in effect here today. Ten days ago, it was the freeze warning, as you remember. Minus three, minus four, overnight temperatures, great concern about whether corn and soybeans should be planted in that kind of environment. It was winter coat, uh, hooded sweatshirt type weather. But today, the heat is on, and it's short and t-shirts and sunscreen weather. Uh, we're going to do a crop tour today, look at three crops, wheat, we're going to look at some corn, we're going to look at some soybeans, uh, and just uh, talk a little bit about what we're seeing. But first of all, this is a wheat field in Ormbillier. Uh, it was planted uh, last uh, last fall on September 7th. It's 25R74 Pioneer Soft Red Wheat. The seeding rate that uh, Norm was able to achieve last year, we suggested 80 pounds of seed to the acre. R74 is a small seeded variety, but we were targeting for that 1 million seeds per acre uh, seeding rate because of the early planting date. And that's exactly, he was able to nail that pretty close. I think it would end up like 78 pounds. Uh, and today we've got an amazing stand of wheat here. It's extremely well tillered with that early planting date and fall conditions that uh, allow tillering to, to, to just, just explode almost with early planting dates. The wheat is well up, uh, if I stood up, it was well up past my knees. It's had a fungicide application on it last week, kind of that, that late T1 or almost T2 uh, timing. People often say, or are always curious about, well, how do you tell what stage wheat is at? Well, how do you tell where the flag leaf is? And it's pretty, it's actually pretty easy. Once you get wheat to this stage, you take any one of these main stems or these, these well-developed tiller stems and you start squeezing at the bottom. Wheat stems are hollow. You'll come to the first little bump and that is the first node. You continue to squeeze up the stem, you'll come to a second bump. That is the second node. You continue to squeeze, the stem will collapse and actually you'll start to get the feel of the third node and you won't be able to see this in camera well, but the head, if I split that apart, the head is right in this stage here. So this last leaf to emerge is the flag leaf. At this stage, you want to forget any kind of a herbicide application. That job should be done, and for the most part in this area, it was done. And uh, that, uh, that first trip across the field with the fungicide was done, which is a good thing in this kind of heat and environment. It is the type of weather where diseases can just unexpectedly explode on you. It's well set up here for the heading fungicide that's going to be occurring in this field. I don't know, it depends on temperature and development. Maybe later next week, we'll see. It's certainly going to be the first part of June when this uh, looks like this wheat will head out. So, nice field of wheat, well developed, nicely along. Of course, the later planted fields aren't quite this far, but if you want to judge and look at wheat and try to figure out just where you're at in terms of timing, straw crunching. It's the easy way to do it. The second stop that we've chosen to make today is actually a hybrid strip, trop, strip plot <laughs> evaluation that's uh, on a farm that uh, Brian runs. The reason that I stopped here at this location is to talk about speed of emergence. This year, holy cow, we are so blessed in, in our local area here. Our corn is just flying out of the ground. Beans as well are coming quickly and we've got uh, ideal conditions in my view for for emergence and early growth. I know in other parts of the province on some real heavy clays or some rains they're fighting emergence and having problems however that's certainly not the case in, in this area even what we call our clay farms are tend to be coming fairly well. But what I again wanted just to illustrate here even this year with rapid emergence in a general sense you still can see some things between hybrids. What I've got here, it's immediately on my right. You may be able to see it in the camera. It's hard to me looking back into the sun, but you may be able to see behind me. This hybrid here is 9535, a brand new hybrid uh, that we're looking at this year. Very small seed quantities. We've just got it in plots. New 2800 unit hybrid, but it literally is a rocket ship out of the ground. And this particular farm and this strip has stood out. I don't even need to look at the stake. I know exactly where the rows of 9535 are visually. Uh, without checking notes because of its rapid early emergence early growth I'll try to show you a little bit closer here, but it's it's easily a good two leaf Most of them are starting to head into a third leaf if you use the leaf over method, but certainly a good strong two leaf The hybrid here to my left that's beside it is 9404 a similar maturity type of hybrid but it is not nearly as far advanced this stage. It's almost a half a leaf to a leaf behind. 
in development versus uh, this faster emerging hybrid on, on my right. Does that mean a whole lot? No, as you all know, we've got four months of growing season yet to go and, and the stresses that are going to occur over the span of that four month time frame is more than going to influence which hybrid ultimately performs better when they're side by side in the field. However, speed, genetic uh, predisposition to fast emergence is something that as seeds people we put in our toolbox, the tool we use that when we're out looking at stands that maybe are a little bit slow to come, especially when you've got Joe's field across the road that maybe has come a little bit faster and you're wondering about your own field, sometimes part of the answer to that question is the genetic predisposition of a hybrid and the hybrid's DNA structure to emerge quickly versus a hybrid that's, that tends to lag a little bit slower. Uh, it's an important part of our evaluation process to position hybrids and I just wanted to illustrate that uh, using this example here uh, today. Okay, now you're going to say, what the heck are you doing in front of a woodlot? Well, I'm going to get to that in a minute. But be, trust me, that behind the camera there literally is a cornfield. Uh, and, and one thing that I wanted that we've learned, I wanted just to share again and emphasize, one thing we've learned over in spades this year, that if our soils are dry, and in good condition that soil temperature isn't necessarily that big of a deal in terms of final stand establishment. We are having excellent stand establishments this year despite the fact that uh, as we've already discussed there were some pretty miserable cold nights, some really strong miserable cold uh, cold days uh, that, uh, that were pretty tough to be out in without heavy winter coat and some protection. So what's the woodlot got to do with it? Well, this year more than anything else, I can see even at 80K going down with my windshield, which you know we're not supposed to do, but we all do it anyway. You can tell rows, headland rows, sides of fields that are, are bordered by either a shelter belt, it can be a single row of trees, it can even be buildings uh, that, and woodlots certainly to the north and to the west of the field that broke those really harsh cold winds uh, during the daytime and it has had a very subtle effect on soil temperatures and the little warmer soils as a result of that little bit of wind protection has influenced again early seedling growth a little faster growth as i said this particular seed that i'm here is just from the behind you it is a strong three leaf it emerged five to six days quicker you can easily see it versus the balance of the field balance of the field is fine but this this headland area did come up quicker again protection uh, from winds and when you're looking at stands it's something to keep in mind about the effects of winds and what you see in terms of early growth so of course here it's not really going to matter because you got deer and coons and they're going to clean off half this half this headland before we get here in November however it's it's interesting just to see the difference in slight soil temperature differences in terms of emergence and early growth. Well, I thought I'd save the best to last. Obviously here, we have moved on from corn. We're now in a field of soybeans. And I tell you what, you can go to the American friends and show them this video and you can say, hey, listen, you think you can grow crops in Champaign County, Illinois? You coming up here to Perth County. We can show you a thing or two about growing soybeans. <laughs> the story on this field is this. I'm um, at the uh, home farm, Colin Friesen, Derek Friesen, uh, Mount Pleasant Grains. Uh, and Derek called me up. I remember specifically, it was uh, on a Friday afternoon. It was April 24th. And he says, Russ, he says, I got a question for you and I need your honest answer. Uh, we've got corn ground that's not ready, but we've worked up this field behind the shop. Uh, it was fall plowed last year, conventional tillage, but he says, it's come up just gorgeous. We we're going to plant soybeans in this field. He says, today, April 24th, it's going to be kind of chilly. What do you think? Should we plant soybeans today? And my immediate response, without thinking too much about it, was, uh, yeah, just hang up the phone, climb up in that tractor cab, and get going. And that's exactly what uh, Derek and Colin did. Now, for the next three weeks, I really wondered. I often thought about this field, and uh, I didn't even want to come and look. I began to think, man, did I really give him a bum steer that day? But you come back today and you look at what we got here and it's proof positive again 
that when soils are fit and dry, regardless, once you get into that end of April through May, regardless of soil temperatures, when things are dry and in lovely shape, you can plant corn and beans. As long as it's good quality seed, strong seed treatment package, you can plant soybeans early and get the kind of stand establishment that you see behind me. We've got unifoliates that uh, have fully expanded and the very first trifoliate is starting to emerge from the center of this, uh, this little bean plant. 26th of May, the first trifoliate starting to emerge. Wow, uh, it's almost too good a story. <laughs> the, uh, the Murphy's Law says, well, I wonder what's gonna go wrong with this field before it's all over and said and done. But by G today, she is a picture. That's it for today's Crop Scout. I'll see you again.